strong sisters if you have been wanting to learn how to squat you've been wanting to improve your squat you want to feel confident squatting you want to make sure you're doing it safe then this video is for you i'm going to be teaching you about the equipment that you're going to need how to squat great warm-ups all the things you need to take into consideration to make sure that you have a fantastic squat i recently was feeling super inspired i popped into the strong sister united facebook group and i saw some of you women sharing awesome videos of your squats so i figured you know what what better time to share a video, drop in some knowledge bombs, helping all of you improve your squat. I'm going to be going over the equipment that you're gonna need, a great warm up, how to hold the barbell, how to do a squat, the different types of squats that you can do, all the details. So if you wanna learn how to improve your squat or just learn how to squat with great form, be sure to like this video and subscribe. I also would love to have you join the Strong Sister United Facebook group. It is completely free. If you just feel like you need some support on your journey and you wanna be around other women who who are strength training, who are learning, who are advanced, all of the above, then come join. So first, we're gonna cover the equipment that you're going to need in order to squat with a barbell. First, I really wanna talk about your shoes. This is gonna be the most important thing. Your shoes should have a very flat base and enough space for your toes to have some wiggle room. So when I look for a shoe, I always look for something that has a relatively supportive heel, but the main thing I'm looking for is that there's not a lot of cushion. Running shoes have a lot of cushion around the heel, the ankle, the ball of the foot. And when you're squatting, you don't really want this cushion. You want your foot to be able to be as flat and connected with the floor as it can to make sure that you have a very stable base. So I personally love wearing shoes that look something like this, that have a nice strong flat base, not a lot of soft running cushion and that have enough room for my toes to move. A very common thing you'll hear people say is you should wear Converse for leg day, wear Converse for leg day. The only issue that I personally have with Converse is they are very narrow shoes and they don't actually allow your feet to really connect with the floor because your toes are being squished. When you're looking for a shoe, make sure it has that very flat bottom and enough room in the toe box for your toes to move so that they're not incredibly crammed and so that you'll be able to push really well through the floor. I also want to briefly cover belts and knee sleeves. If you're a complete beginner, I would not necessarily recommend investing in these things because these aren't pieces of equipment that you need until you're touching some very heavy weights and getting under some very challenging loads. So when it comes to finding a belt, there are multiple different types of belts. You can have leather belts, you can have belts that have Velcro. It's all gonna ultimately come down to your preference and what your sport is. I personally have a belt that has a nice velcro strap. It's super easy to put on, super easy to take off, very comfortable. It's very thin, seamless. It's not super bulky or uncomfortable at all and I really enjoy this. Another piece of equipment that you could look into if you really want to take things to the next level, maybe you're focusing on powerlifting and hitting some you know, very heavy one to three, maybe even five reps, are knee sleeves. And I will also insert a picture of the knee sleeves I have here. Some people will use knee wraps if you are super advanced. That's a whole nother can of worms to open just because there are certain ways you can put them on. I personally just have a knee sleeve that you slide right on your knees. It just adds a nice little bit of compression and it gives you that extra comfort when you are under heavier loads. But I do wanna say, Belts and knee sleeves are not necessary from the beginning. You can learn how to squat and you should learn how to squat with just a good pair of shoes in your body. Because essentially the belt and the knee sleeves are all things that you wanna first build the strength up to do on your own before then seeking out those pieces of equipment. Next, I'm gonna take you guys through five different exercises that you could do before your squats, just to help as a good squat warm up. And if you are also lacking a little bit of mobility or you're a little bit nervous, you haven't ever squatted before, you wanna make sure that when you go to do it, you feel confident. I'm gonna run you through some movements that you can practice beforehand to make sure that you feel very well warmed up and ready to squat. We are gonna get down to a half kneeling position. And first I want you to start with your back foot flat on the floor here. I want you to focus on keeping your hips squared and pushing your knee over your toe while keeping your heel completely flat on the floor. You might feel a stretch in your adductors, maybe a little bit in your groin. And the goal of this is to really get your ankles and knees moving. You want to be able to have your ankles prepared to go over the toes as you are gonna to be squatting. 
Next, we're gonna go into this 90-90 position. You're gonna have each leg laying flat on the ground with a 90 degree angle. I want you to focus on keeping your butt on the floor, lifting your knees up so that you're on your heels and shifting your weight over to the other side of your body, lowering your knees down to the floor. This is one of my favorite movements to really get my um, hips warmed up for squatting. It also feels really good on my adductors and it's just a great dynamic warm up to include into your routine. You also may feel some glute activation here. That is also crucial when you are under the bar. So now that we have started with some hip and ankle, we're gonna go into a dead bug. So I'm gonna have you bring your arms up over your body, your knees are gonna be at a 90 degree angle, and you are going to lower your alternating arm and leg down to the floor at the same time while keeping your lower back completely flat on the floor. This is a core movement. We are gonna get that core engaged before we go into squatting. Next, we're gonna do the reverse of a dead bug and do bird dog. When you're doing this movement, you're gonna be raising one leg in the opposite arm. You really wanna focus on engaging your core and your glutes. When you're extending your back leg, think of extending it towards a wall behind you. Don't think of extending up towards the ceiling. Think of elongating your body as much as you can and engaging your glute. Next, we're gonna go into some work on the calves. I want you to first find an object that is a little bit elevated so that you can have your leg hanging off of it. And I want you to first focus on stretching for two to three seconds, then engaging your calf muscle to raise your calf up. This is gonna be some active and then passive stretching. So the passive part is allowing the stretch. The active part is standing up and completing that calf raise. Now that you guys have gone through a little warm up before your squat, I want to talk about a very common misconception of can my knees go over my toes when squatting? If you have no prior injury to your knees or ankles, then your knees can absolutely go over your toes when squatting. In fact, this is a sign that you have really great mobility and that you have pretty healthy knees and ankles. You always wanna make sure when you are squatting though that your feet stay completely flat on the floor. So if your knees can go forward but your heels come up off the ground, that's a no. We don't wanna see that. You're not gonna be able to be very stable on your feet and the goal is to be able to have as much stability in your foot so that you are able to create as much force as you can when you're squatting. So if you can keep your feet completely flat on the floor and your knees go forward in a squat, totally okay. In order to reach full depth in a squat, you're going to have to have your knees travel forward to some degree or else it's gonna be really challenging for you to get your hips to sit below parallel. What this means is that when you look at the squat from a side and you're going and sitting down to the squat, the goal is to get your hips to sit below the knee joint. If you were to draw a line from my knees to my hips, the goal is that my hip crease is sitting below that line. This means that you are sitting below depth, so you are in a nice deep squat. Let's say, for example, you wanted to stop your knees from going forward over your toes. What's going to happen is you're going to do a lot of bending in the torso and hinging at the hips, and this is going to create so much more stress on your low back than it would if you were to just focus on sitting deep into the squat and pushing your knees forward. Next, I wanna discuss the two different types of squatting that you can do. There is a high bar squat and there is a low bar squat. The high bar squat, the barbell is gonna sit higher up on your back. In the low bar squat, the barbell is gonna sit lower on your back. We're first gonna cover the high bar squat. The high bar squat is great if you want to focus on building your quads and let's say in the future you wanted to try out some Olympic lifts like the snatch in the clean and jerk, the high bar squat is gonna transfer well into those lifts. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to approach the bar, how to set up for a high bar squat and all the things in between. First, you're gonna place your thumbs right where the knurling on the bar starts. Then from here, you are going to lower your body under the bar and place the bar on top of your traps. This is gonna be the meat of your back. Then you're going to keep your feet first close together, step one foot back, followed by the other foot, and then step each foot out slightly so that you can sit nice and deep into your squat. From here, you wanna make sure that you're keeping your gaze straight in front of you too. Next, we're going to talk about the low bar squat. The low bar squat is awesome if you wanna focus on building your quads, building your glutes, and overall if you have goals to build strength. This is going to be a position 
that people often feel strongest in. So whenever you watch powerlifting meets, you most likely will see a lot of powerlifters squatting with this low bar position. I'm gonna take you guys through how to low bar squat. Just like for the high bar, we're gonna have the same hand position here. And as you bring your body underneath the bar, you wanna think of squeezing your back muscles so that your rear delts are sitting like a shelf so that you can place the barbell on top of your rear delts. Same thing here, you're gonna first just stand up with the bar, take one step directly backwards, followed by another step directly backwards, and then you can step each foot out slightly as you sit into your squat. You're going to also wanna keep your gaze right out in front of you to keep a nice neutral spine when low bar squatting as well. As you can see here too, my elbows are in line with my torso, so they're not sticking directly out, they're supporting the bar. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to make sure that you felt super confident whenever it comes to learning how to squat so that you can not only get stronger, but feel confident under the bar and in the gym. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below what type of squat you prefer to do. Are you a high bar girl? Are you a low bar girl? What do you enjoy? If you guys need any help or have any questions or just want some extra support, please be sure to come join the Strong Sister United Facebook group. I would love to have you in there we have tons of women getting stronger sharing their progress and supporting each other along the way that's all i have for you guys today i will see you in the next video bye